This is the Digital Music Trends uh, MEDEM 2014 coverage, uh, an interview with uh, Mandar Takur, a Chief Operating Officer at Times Music. DMT's coverage is brought to you by CI, the leading provider of digital delivery services to the independent community on ci-info.com. Hi Mandar, uh, it's great to have you here uh, in Cannes. How's it going? Going very well. We, are, we all love MEDEM and I think uh, uh, I, I just wish it wasn't raining. Uh, it's not good for business, but otherwise, I think this is a good mid-end this year. Yeah. yeah. It feels like it, it rains every other year in Cancer. <laughs> I think so. I think it's sort of, you know, they, they all decide that when everyone comes in for mid-end, it must rain that weekend. And then when everyone goes back, the sun comes out. <laughs> So, uh, I mean, I'm super interested in the Indian music scene, but let's start uh, from Times Music for people that might not be familiar with, uh, with the company. You know, it's, it's, it's a large music organization, but what do you guys do and, and, and who are you? Um, Times Music is one of the largest independent music labels in India. We are a music and a publishing company, right? Um, and we are housed within South Asia's largest media conglomerate, which is the Times of India Group. So we own radio stations, newspapers, magazines, Times Internet. We own the largest streaming business in India. There, there's a box TV, which is like a video business. So Times Music is the music and multimedia division yeah. um, and the content, music content exploitation division of the group, right? So we house a, a wellness business. We house a record label. We house a music publisher. We're also, as part of the music publishing business, the Indian representatives for Warner Chapel, we sub-publish that catalog, besides a score of other small catalogs in the business. So we're effectively a, a music content company that does both IP management as well as recorded music and digital licensing. And uh, talking about this, the state of the recorded uh, music industry, uh, is, are the models that are uh, you know, applied in India uh, essentially very similar to the ones that we have uh, uh, here you know, in, in, in the UK or in the US as far as uh, licensing, as far as uh, um, record sales, uh, royalties and, and all those uh, sort of host of issues? I think the models are pretty much similar, give or take a little bit. But what could be different is the structure of the industry and the structure of copyright, uh, you know, of, of the financial end of the copyright monetization process. So let me sort of take a step back. Um, in terms of business model, yeah, I mean, if you got you got the CD sales that are like anywhere else, you've got downloads and you've got streaming. And, and as usual, you know, whilst the streaming businesses, like I said on yesterday's panel, you know, all the streaming guys go around talking about, oh, we're building great social media, we're building fan following, we're building blah, 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 and wait for the pennies to drop. Fact of the matter is, when you look at the rest of the world, which is outside of the US, UK, and Europe, uh, and particularly South Asia and that diaspora, you will realize that those countries musically are about the song, not about the artist. Because of a large inbuilt film culture, a large 100-year-old musical heritage, markets like India, uh, music and movies are one and the same. Every movie is a musical. So there is no real artist out there. There is a director who knows what song he wants. Music composer composes it to a brief. Uh, it's all sort of work for hire. So it's, it's a created track, like an advertisement jingle. Um, in that sort of a situation, all you're talking about is plays because you know and and that's uh, you know so those bits and pieces like that differ in an Indian business scenario um, now when it comes to copyright uh, that's a whole different ball game for the longest time I always said you know I mean copyright was considered the right to copy uh, as opposed to the right to protect and exploit it um, and uh, last year uh, the industry got together with music composers the government stepped in and a brand new spanking copyright law got refurbished, which finally legally recognized mechanicals. Um, so there is an interim sort of rate that we've agreed with the, the music publishers and you know, the record industry and the composers. And that sort of rate goes on for mechanicals. Um, there, there's a you know, fully functional copyright, uh, sorry, performance collection society playing on, which will soon be administering mechanicals. So, you know, bits and pieces from, from a new IP-based structure that's all coming together now. Um, in terms of marketing, sales, exploitation, I think those lines are pretty much similar. And then looking at the landscape, you're talking about being an independent uh, uh, label, essentially. You know, how do you see, uh, what's the landscape like in terms of majors? Are the majors present in India? And what is their market share, essentially? Oh, well, okay, yeah. I mean, look, the majors are all present in India. They have been present since the last... Um, Close to 40 years, 50 years, uh, perhaps more, in different shapes and forms, licensees, holding companies, back to licensing. 
Um, so structurally, there are the international majors and then there are the local majors, right? So we are sort of like a, a but we, you know, we, we operate independent. We, we, we're not baggaged and with the, with the largeness of a corporation. Our core company is probably bigger than most of the majors, but we are allowed, because we're in the new business, we are allowed to uh, pretty much chart our own course globally that way. Um, I think structurally speaking, it's a, I think it's like a, perhaps and you know give or take a few million this is a us 260 or 270 million uh, business um, out of which repertoire wise local repertoire is pre the predominant repertoire i mean we've just got you know that's one of the things about india it's all homogeneously produced local repertoire because we've got a far bigger musical heritage than the rest of the world so local repertoire rules out of which 75% are bollywood film musicals and then the rest is non film now, on the physical market, um, out of the 100%, only 1.5% is international music, right? And it's remained, uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, only 5% is international music. On mobile music, which is Ringback Tones, IVR-based mobile radio, it's only 1.5%. And that has got to do with the fact that it's not a smartphone-based system. Very, you know, the lowest strata of society also uses that, and that's, they don't, I mean, they don't consume international music, right? Um, but when it comes to streaming and when it comes to iTunes, it's a different picture. I would estimate an iTunes to have perhaps a 26% share of international music only because of the profile of the customer who buys an iPhone, it's expensive and upwardly mobile. And when it comes to streaming services, a newer picture emerges because now people have choice, they can search on a larger screen, most of the catalogs are available, so all other forms of music come up. So the percentages keep uh, keep sort of changing. Now, um, in terms of splits between digital and physical, most Indian record labels will be at a at an average, maybe a weighted average median of seven between 70 and 75 percent as digital income. So we are sort of far ahead of though, but that digital income includes mobile income, which is a larger chunk, right? Um, and in terms of structure, T-series, which owns a large chunk of Bollywood repertoire, is the leading music company out of India. Um, which is followed by Sarigama, which is pretty much does catalog management. It's a hundred year old company, ex EMI licensee. Um, so they, they size wise, they're sort of number two, uh, but not very active on a day to day basis. Um, and number three is Sony Music, uh, which is as good as a, lo a, a local major. I mean, they're like a 360 company, they're involved in Bollywood, regional music. I mean, it's it's fairly large, right? Uh, and after that, then there is a fourth layer, which includes people like us. So that would be us, uh, Universal EMI. Universal EMI would be a little above us in terms of revenue, and then there is us at a sort of... And that, I think, is composes the sort of top five labels out of India. And then there are the smaller labels like Tips, Venus, and, and these labels have been very big, but, you know, the business has turned more to film production, uh, and the music business is sort of... Uh, you know, they've not gone ahead acquiring a lot, so they've sort of uh, slipped down onto it. So that, that is the gradation structure. Of the uh, like the fact that it's so linked to the mo movie industry, it's also interesting because when you're talking about an independent label like, like yourselves, and, and you know, a player that is sort of uh, uh, still very large, but uh, you know, how do you get uh, fans to know about the music? Do you, do you collaborate directly with directors? Is there like a close tie up uh, with the cinema industry? Uh, that ends up getting films in your lap, essentially, that you end up uh, you know, uh, releasing? Uh, how does it work? Okay, there are sort of two aspects to marketing, both traditional, right? India is a large television business. And I've, I've always believed music has to be either seen or heard, you know. Um, so what happens is for Bollywood, the film itself acts as the vehicle of promotion. So the film trailers, uh, clips of the music videos, actually come out on um, on television, radio, and that gives a huge boost on publicity, right? So that's the one part, TV, radio, predominantly TV followed by radio. Uh, but that's a film, and then there's the usual actor promotions, music launch, and blah, blah, blah. The second part, which is the non-film music part of it, which is really, again, television, uh, a lot of press, perhaps some uh, ground activity. So again, very, very traditional in that sense. And of course, now there's the sort of under layer of YouTube on its own. But again, you know, I mean, everyone's not going to be big on YouTube. I mean, it's a, it's a question of where do you stick and, and if your neck is long enough, you'll sort of make it uh, onto that. So that's, yeah. And so you're talking about, you know, traditional methods of uh, 
of marketing. We talked about uh, the importance of mobile uh, for accessing uh, for ringtones as well. Uh, and of course, the fact that uh, uh, not that many people have smartphones yet also affects the adoption of streaming services. But there are some streaming services in India. So, so what are the bigger ones? The big, the number one streaming service is Ghana.com, which is incidentally owned by our parent company. Um, then the second one now is a service called Savan. Uh, the original number one was Dingana.com, which uh, sort of had some cash investor problems and they're sort of on hold at the moment, I believe. Uh, so that sort of leveraged Ghana up. Ghana was the original number one, you know, a year back. And Savan at number two. Then there are other services like the Nokia OV store, which is very big in India. Yeah, I mean, probably one of the few, yes. Um, and, and then there are the sort of Indian um, businesses streaming and download that either work with other aggregators, perhaps, uh, you know, the iTunes, the Amazons, the Netflixes. These are things like Raga.com, um, iMusti. These are based out of US, um, but catering to a fairly uh, large Indian diaspora. So clux of these are the local homegrown music services. Of course, there is iTunes that's present. Um, and, and YouTube is huge in India, like uh, huge is like an understatement and they're growing in leaps and bounds. So I think um, uh, pretty much this coming year, you may have the entry of the global sort of streaming service coming in, uh, you know, perhaps some point, some point this year. And that I believe will sort of kickstart a war because India is about war. Any industry, you know, you look at the telecom industry, you look at Coke, Pepsi, you look at MTV, Channel V. Um, the country is fairly voracious in its appetite. Um, the peculiarity of India is that it skips, uh, skips uh, technology. So, you know, if, if, if you go back, the pager never, never even got born in India. And people jumped off to mobiles. And when mobiles started getting big, the smartphone revolution took off. You know? So it's a, it's a generation skipping uh, sort of country. The, and uh, finally, you know, we're talking about uh, potentially uh, third party services entering India. Uh, uh, you know, big streaming giants that are already uh, out elsewhere in the world. Uh, the big challenge here, of course, like you mentioned, the, the, the home catalog is 95% uh, of what's being consumed right now. So the big challenge for them is going to be to license the catalog that they need to actually become a, an appealing service to, to yes. the, the country, essentially, right? Yeah, I think the, the one thing about a market like India, and that is starkly different to China, is, as I said, the, the, the independently homogeneous grown catalog of Indian music. I mean, it's a hundred year old catalog, right? And Bollywood films are a lifestyle for us. You know, I mean, it's like a drug, right? There's, there's Bollywood, there's cricket. We don't know anything in between. The rest of it is sort of nice, but it's, uh, it's not a must have item, right? Um, now, given that, what happens is um, um, when, 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 a, it, when a global service or even if a local service comes in, there are a few must have content items, right? Those are split between about three or four labels. Once those are done, the others fall. But India's again, it's strangely, it's strange that India is actually one country. Because theoretically speaking, you know, the south of India has no connection to the north of India. We don't even look alike. I mean, the northeast, I mean, the, you know, uh, it's, it's just very different physically, different mental processes, 22 states, 22 languages. Uh, there's no one size fits all. It can never be. So the regional markets play a huge huge i can't even emphasize how huge a role in the proliferation of music and a service of success youtube is learning that now nokia has learned it itunes has learned it uh, the local services are learning so it's a it's a process where there is the hindi nationwide bollywood thing there is the south indian repertoire which is tamil followed by telugu uh, and then there's north indian repertoire so these kind mixes of music are very critical to have I do believe that the international players would have some of the local catalog already licensed via people like The Orchard and Believe Digital or Rebeat. Um, and what is not licensed, I'm sure they can come in and license. I mean, the, the India doesn't have a big complex system of licensing, unlike Europe, which, which could get scary, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, uh, Mandar, it was a real pleasure talking to you and uh, definitely a very informative uh, window on what's happening in, in the Indian music industry. And uh, I really hope you're going to come back uh, on uh, if there's anything exciting happening and, and talk to us about it. Sure. Thank you very much, Andrea. Uh, this is actually a great pleasure. So thanks very much. Thank you. And thanks for watching the DMT coverage of Medium 2014. You can find out more information on digitalmusictrans.com or youtube.com slash digitalmusictrans.